Ladies and gentlemen, boys and... Oh, fuck, hang on. I'm on a balcony here. Girls! Welcome to episode 88 or 9 of the Spear and Sunnies podcast, New Zealand edition. Uh, I'm in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, this is going to be a short podcast. I do apologize, but today is travel day. Um, so I, I'm only, I've only got about half an hour before I have, I'm going to get kicked out of this fucking hotel. Uh, you know, it might be two minutes now that I've yelled out of the balcony, but uh, I wanted to do a podcast because otherwise I'm going to be spending like fucking, you know, two hours on a plane, then I'll get home and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll do a podcast and then I'll be in a shitty mood and I'll be really tired and I'll smell like shit and I'll just have a shower and then fall asleep, all right? So I'm doing the podcast uh, before I leave. I'm in uh, Auckland at the moment, Uh, Auckland, New Zealand. It's fucking beautiful here. Well, look, where I'm staying is an an absolute shithole. Actually, like it's one of the worst places I've stayed in. This whole tour of New Zealand uh, really brings me back to my first tour of Australia. Like, you perform in shitholes, you stay in shitholes, not many people come, but it's so sick just to see people there because you weren't sure if anyone was going to turn up. Like, it really brings me back to that. Um, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who came to the New Zealand shows. Uh, Auckland was the final one. We did that last night and that one was fucking phenomenal. I I went to Queenstown, uh, I went to Dunedin, Christchurch and Auckland. And, uh, last night's show, man, was fucking off its tits. Everyone was loud, yelling, uh, all that kind of shit. And I, I really, really liked it. So thank you very much to everyone who came to all of the shows. Um... And this country, I cannot get over how fucking beautiful it is. Like, where I'm staying is a shithole. All I can see is dirty apartment buildings. But, man, the scenery here is incredible. Like, I'll be looking out the window just losing my mind. Because we drove everywhere instead of flying because it was cheaper. We had four people. And I was just looking out the window fucking losing my mind. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? That has to be where they filmed Lord of the Rings. Oh, man, that's got to be where God fucks angels. Like, it's just the most incredible shit uh, I've ever seen in my life. If you haven't been to New Zealand, you have to go. And what really gets me, too, is the air is just clean for some reason. I don't know what it is. It must be less people or, you know, because you're closer to the ocean. I don't know what it is, but the air is just the best. Um, But, you know, saying that, New Zealand gave me the worst first impression, man. Uh, I landed <laughs> in the airport. You guys are going to be like this. I don't know. Look, let me know if you think I'm a fucking idiot in this situation. Either way, I ended up getting fucked. So we land in, uh, where do we land? In Queenstown or some shit. Uh, we land there and um, there's the customs forms that you have to sign telling them what's in your bags. Like, do you have any weapons? Do you have anything dangerous? Blah, blah, blah. All that kind of shit. And I, like a fucking moron, told the truth. Like, uh, you know, you really don't want to tell the truth on those things. Like, you know, meth dealers, they're not telling the truth, are they? No. They're not, being, they're not ticking the meth box. Like, yeah, I got a bit of meth, a little bit of cocaine, a couple of guns. They don't do that. They say, no, nah, I got nothing in my bags, just some t-shirts, all right? Well, I was stupid. Um, I wasn't trafficking meth or drugs or anything like that. I was trying to traffic merchandise, my own t-shirts and posters. So uh, there's this little box on their customs form that says, do you have any commercial items that you want to sell? And I was like, yeah, I guess I do. I've got all of these t-shirts. So I ticked the box, didn't think anything of it, got off, got off the plane, uh, talked to the customs people, and then three fucking hours later... <laughs> uh, I'm in customs. I got a finger in my ass. No, I don't. But like, I was in. I, they, I got the customs people saw my form. They took me into the back room. They open up my suitcase. They start going through the t-shirts, asking me how much they're worth. How much am I selling them for? Why are you here? Why didn't you declare them? All of this kind of shit. And I, and it, anyway, at the end of the three hours. The guy goes, all right, so, all right, so, if you want to bring these t-shirts into New Zealand, uh, it's going to cost you $500. <sighs> and I was like, oh, all right, well, fuck me, let's get it over with. And I bent over for him, and he just raped the shit out of my wallet. It was the fucking worst, dude. Like, uh, I, I, I tallied, I just counted all of the money uh, that I made from, uh, from merchandise, well, I'll tell you, right? So before I tell you that, 
Um, bringing the shirts over, I was planning on making about uh, $700 from the merch. Uh, and then immediately I get put into a $500 hole. <laughs> so I'm at negative 500. I'm not even at zero. So uh, I'm, I'm pushing the merch really hard while I'm in New Zealand. And then I get to uh, today after the final show and I just counted up the merch money. And uh, minus the cost that it took me to buy the extra baggage, minus the cost that it cost me to make the t-shirts and make the posters and bring them out here. And then with the added 500 rape tax that New Zealand hit me with, uh, I made, uh, even though I sold two thirds of my t-shirts, I made about 10 bucks. (laughs) So, woo! Thank you very much, New Zealand, for that. Really helping out these fucking struggling artists here, but I don't know, I don't mind. To, to me, man, people wearing my t-shirt is so much cooler to me than 10 bucks, you know what I mean? That's what I, I, I always nerd out when I see people wearing my t-shirts. It's really fucking cool. Um, you know what's funny? That uh, um, when we got to Queenstown... That was the first city we went to, and I didn't know this, but Queenstown is like the Gold Coast in Australia. Nobody lives there. It's just full of tourists. Like it's like the population is 120,000. 20,000 of those people are like uh, old senior citizens, and then the other 100,000 are just fucking tourists. Like we landed in Queenstown, we got there, and I hadn't met a single New Zealander. And I remember we all got there. I'm like, where the fuck are the New Zealanders? Like, no joke, we landed in New Zealand, didn't meet an a- a someone with a New Zealand accent for about four hours. Like, it was nuts. Every single person in Queenstown was English or Scottish or Australian. It was like, well, it was like the biggest disappointment. I was like, what the fuck? I wanted to hear funny New Zealand accents. I wanted to hear someone say, choice, chur, mean as... All that shit, all right? But instead, I was just hearing normal Australian accents. It sucked. Um, But uh, the Queenstown show, that was a weird fucking show. I think we did it in a a backpacker's hotel. Like I said, this is my first time touring a company, a country, so it's, uh, we do shitholes. So we did a backpacker's restaurant hotel thing in Queenstown, and honestly... There were about three people that knew who I was and 97 backpackers who were like, yeah, comedy, all right. (laughs) So if you were one of the three people who knew me that came to the Queenstown show, I do apologize about the weird vibe. It's hard to tell jokes about about tragic accidents and do... um, a little bit of stage banter when... 97 people, 97% of the audience literally are like, ah, comedy's kind of good, but you know what's better? Drinking and trying to fuck a girl while I'm overseas. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that show had a very weird vibe, but um, I appreciate the three people who knew me that came over. Sorry about that. I don't think I'll do Queenstown again. I'm not sure why they booked me there. Like I said, this is the first time uh, that I've ever used... Uh, somebody else to book my tours just because I don't know New Zealand. So I'm like, I would think that New Zealanders would know the best place to put me. So um, I don't think I'll do Queenstown if I come back. Uh, I think I'll replace that and actually do Wellington, which is the capital of the city, as all of you fucking cunts keep reminding me, why aren't you coming to Wellington? Look, I didn't book the t- I didn't book this tour, and also we couldn't do a million dates. One mainly because I'm not very big in New Zealand, but also because of the radio and the special coming up. I can't be spending so much time in New Zealand. I need to work on those other projects. But next year I'll definitely be coming back, and uh, it'll definitely be bigger. I'll be doing Wellington, and I'm gonna try and make them all ages too, because I know a lot of people did miss out. Uh, don't worry, it'll still be the same fuck show. Uh, then uh, we went off to um, where do we? Go? Go next. We went to Dunedin next. Uh, that was an awesome show. That was we performed in a church in Dunedin, or it used to be a church, and it was run by an ex priest. Um, and I thought that was really weird. I was like, "Why is this dude just turned a church into a theater?" Um, and then I saw that he was watching the show and fucking pissing himself at all of my darkest jokes. And I was like, "Yeah, okay." 
He's definitely an ex-priest, and this is probably why he left the church, so he could laugh at horrible shit and actually enjoy his life rather than being dressing up in a robe and being, man, I would really like to fuck a girl one day. Um, then we went off to Christchurch, and uh, that's where all of the earthquakes happened in New Zealand. And um, it was a couple couple years ago, so they had some of the worst earthquakes they've ever had. Uh, and the city, I would have thought, well, I was surprised to see that it was. It still hasn't recovered. It was crazy, man. Like, you would drive throughout the city in Christchurch, and it was really kind of depressing. Like, all of these buildings were just locked off. Like, you can't come in here, but we also don't have the money to demolish it. So, uh, the tour manager was telling me that when these earthquakes happened, so many fucking buildings got destroyed that uh, the insurance companies they're insured by all just went broke and were like, yeah, we can't fucking pay for this, I'm sorry. Uh, and it just left uh, a whole bunch of people just fucked. And so there's all of these uh, shipping containers that have been turned into businesses for all of these people who lost their business buildings. They now operate out of fucking shipping containers. It's, it's, uh, it, was, it was crazy to see, but um, uh, I, I would say the highlight of New Zealand is your radio, guys. Like, New Zealand radio is... is it's like a parody of itself. It's the funniest fucking shit. We were listening to the radio, um, and it's just... what Because your country is so small, <clears throat> what clarifies as news is absolutely astounding. Like, they were talking on the news about some guy who had just started a new business. Like, he's just one dude starting one business. And they'd be like, check it out. This is Todd's fucking oranges. Check out what he's selling. And it was, this, was, this shit was on the radio, man. And their radio stations and all of their products, too, in New Zealand. I don't know why you guys do this, but you fucking name your products. You either give them a name or you give them a feeling or an emotion. It's the weirdest shit. Like, uh, their, one of their main radio stations is called George FM. And, and, and they'll always be like, oh, you're listening to George. Hey, this is George. <laughs> like, like it's a fucking person. And then their foods, uh, like I had, uh, what did I, what did I eat? I had some serious popcorn. So that's a personality. And then later in the day, I bought a bottle of simple water so, you know, it's really simple. And then I'm pretty sure I had some, uh, what did I have? I had some happy chips as well in a bag. And then, then there was like, I don't know, then all of these other products had fucking names. It's the, I don't know, I just don't understand it. It's the weirdest shit, but I fucking love it. Like, like New Zealand, I don't think they're aware that they are a parody of themselves. Like, it's a fucking sketch, bro. Like, you ever see that Police 10 7 show? <laughs> it's uh, it's like their cops, right? It's the New Zealand's version of cops. So in Australia, Police 107 plays after cops. So you watch the American cops, and there'll be like guns and drug dealers and child traffickers and prostitutes. Like the police will bash down in a, a drug house and be like, get on the fucking floor, get on the floor, hands up. And then there might be some shots fired, and the camera guy will piss his pants and freak out and then it'll be like the most crazy shit you've ever seen and that's every single episode and then straight after that police 10 7 police 10 7 plays which is the new zealand version and it'll just be like a cop pulling over a guy for speeding and he'll walk over to the dude and be like uh excuse me mister uh you were speeding there uh that's against the law uh, i'm gonna have to give you a fine and then the, the guy who's speeding will be like oh yes fair enough eh Sorry about that, officer. And then the officer will be like, ah, oh, you know what? Don't worry about the fine, mate. I'll get I'll let you off with a warning. Just don't do it again. And that's it. <laughs> that's the whole fucking episode. That's the biggest crime that happened that day. <laughs> oh, man. Craziest shit happened at one of the... I think this is in Christchurch. Uh, always, I always end up with one... Weird fan story, all right? So here's my weird fan story in Christchurch. Everybody who came to the Christchurch show is listening to this going, fuck, was this me? Did I do something awkward? It's like, yeah, you're my fans. You definitely did something awkward, but there's always one cunt that takes the cake. <laughs> so after the Christchurch show, I meet everybody after my shows because I like meeting everyone who supports me and all that kind of stuff and having a chat. Um, there was this really, really short girl. She might have been like five foot three, five foot four, right? Uh, really short girl, huge boobs, nice chick. Um, 
and I'm talking to her. She's with her boyfriend. And uh, so we get a photo. I get a photo with him. And then he takes a photo of her and me. Uh, and the photo just looks shit because I'm just so much taller than her. Like pretty much all you could see in the photo was like boobs, her head, and then my neck and shoulders. No head, from, <laughs> none of my head are there. So she was like, oh, if you kneel down, would you be taller than me? And I was like, oh, maybe. So I get down on my knees and I, I stand up straight. Well, I knee up straight. <laughs> uh, and turns out we're the same height. So that was funny. That was a funny photo. She puts her arm around me and we take the photo. And then um, I'm like, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Um, I'm glad you like the show. And then she whispers in my ears, have you ever fucked a midget before? <laughs> I was like, no, th- but, th- but thank you for coming. Have a nice day. And I just stood up and was like, shook her hand and shook his, like right in front of her boyfriend. I was like, oh, I don't need to... St- I don't need to be the reason why a relationship ends. No, thank you. Um, so, but yeah, thank you very much to, thank you for the offer. <laughs> Whoever that lady was, if that was even an offer, I'm pretty sure it was serious. I don't think it was a joke. It did, you know why? Cause it wasn't delivered like a joke. It was, it was delivered like a, I have a, I have a bit of free time after the show. <laughs> I mean, no, I just wasn't, <clears throat> I just wasn't into that. I mean, maybe if she said, have you ever fucked a midget while their boyfriend watches? I would have been like, yeah, fucking oath, let's do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was probably the weirdest fan interaction I had. Uh, you know what my favorite thing about New Zealand is? Is the Maori guys that have face tattoos, like all over their face. It's It's like, it's at the same time incredibly fascinating and incredibly scary because... You want to look at the tattoo, but you don't want to look at him in the face. But you want to look, but you can't. You don't want to look him in the eyes. But you want to fucking look at his tattoos, but you also don't want to look at his cunt because he looks terrifying. But you really want to fucking stare. And it's just, it's like the biggest decision you have to make. It's like before you go bungee jumping. It's like, oh, this might add value to my life, but there is a small possibility that I could end up fucking (laughs) face first on the pavement, dead. Oh, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this, this, sorry, sorry again. I'm, I need to wrap this podcast up soon. I need to, I'm in my hotel room. I got late checkout, but uh, I'm supposed to leave at 11 and what time is it now? It's 10 57. So I'm going to have to wrap this one up pretty quick. I'm sorry that this, this one was so short. I was, um, the reason I'm actually not with any of the other boys, uh, the, the promoter, Luke, uh, Kidgel and Todd, the camera guy we brought with us to, to film the tour life vlog, which should be out next week. Uh, they've all left. They left at four in the morning and I was going to go with them. That was the original plan, but, um, oh no, actually, sorry. This is what happened. The, uh, I was originally going to stay here for a whole week and they were going to leave early in the morning so I could stay here and relax before my special. That was, that's when we were organizing this. So we had booked, uh, we did, we just did not book a return, hu- return flight home for me. I was just going to chill in New Zealand for a week cause I think it's beautiful. Uh, so I could focus on, you know, just relaxing before the special, but then this radio stuff came out of nowhere. Um, so I had to cancel that, but the problem was the flight that the boys took back was full. So now I have to take a flight back at fucking 10 PM. But the problem is I check out at 11 AM here in about three minutes. So I'm just going to have to hang out in Auckland for eight hours and then go to the airport. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wander around. I put a thing out on Snapchat looking for suggestions. Um, I'm putting this up on Sunday. If you are if you are a New Zealander and you're in Auckland and you know what's good to do for a long fucking time, uh, message me on Snapchat and I'll I'll uh, keep it in mind for sure. But um, yeah, I'm super excited to explore this place. Um, I think it's going to be, I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just really, really happy about this whole tour. The, the shows were fucking killer. Um, people actually turned up and it would just blew my mind that I was in a country that I really haven't been to before properly. And, uh, you know, every single show had people in it. And that is, uh, that's the fucking dream, ladies and gentlemen, an international show and, uh, people turned up. So thank you very much to everyone who came <coughs> Once again, sorry, this podcast is short. I've kind of been losing my voice a little bit because I've been because I yell at the shows and I'm really fucked. But um, yeah, I'll I'll be back next week with an hour long podcast. I just uh, if I go for an hour, I'll end up getting fined and they'll 
fucking kick me out. So um, sorry about that. But uh, I will talk to you next Sunday. And uh, the, also, I'll talk to you on Monday to Friday with the Luke and Lewis for Lunch show on Triple M Modern Digital. And you can check out that podcast. That's returning as, as normal from Monday, which is tomorrow. Uh, man, I'm going to be fucked for that show. I'm going to have to... Oh, fuck, I land in Australia at like 11 or 12. And then I have to get up at like 9... No, I have to get up at like 7.30 so I can get to the radio station early so we can plan the show. Fuck. Oh, this is going to be a, this is going to be a rough couple of days, I tell you that. But um, yeah, I, I can't explain my gratitude. Thank you so much to everyone who came to the, New, to the New Zealand show. And oh, also, my comedy special, the, the, there's a few remaining tickets in Melbourne that are going to be released very, very soon. So keep an eye on my page. Keep an eye on my gig list. I'll be sending out an email at loosebeers.com slash gig list. Um, don't worry to everyone who's pledged for the special uh, on Indiegogo to receive their tickets. Um, you will not have... No one's got it an email yet, but all of the tickets are reserved. So even if the tickets go on sale before you get your email confirming the tickets you will not lose your spot you've got the front two you've got the 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 front half of the venue locked in it's just a matter of uh, allocating the seats so don't freak out if you see us put it on sale before you receive your ticket you are fucking sweet nobody will get a better seat than you all right so keep it on my page my special tickets go on sale uh Probably, probably next week, man, because it's uh, being recorded on November 17 and 18. There are, I think, look, there's very, very few tickets left. Most of them sold out in, in uh, the Indiegogo thing. So keep an eye on it if you want to come. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Sorry, again, this, was, this one was a short one. And I fucking love New Zealand. This is the Speared Sundays podcast. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have an incredibly fucking shit one.